How's it going YouTube? Tuner to here. Welcome back to my review series on the Dragon Ball Heroes manga, specifically Dragon Ball Heroes Victory Mission. If you're not familiar with what I do, I go chapter by chapter, read each of them, record my thoughts on the chapter, and I basically compile each of those thoughts into a video, and then give my reaction at the end. I think this is the most authentic way for me to react or read a manga for the channel that's official. So we're just going to go straight into it with chapter 11, volume 2. And I really enjoyed this chapter. This is where they're setting up the next big tournament in the Victory Coliseum. It says in the capital we get introduced to a ton of new characters. I don't know them all right off the bat. But the one beat it seems interested in, they say his name a lot, it's Kagyu, I think. Kagyu? Kagyu or something like that? It's really hard for me to pronounce. But he seems to know everybody's uh, setup and he knows who everybody is, so that's cool. Froze is back and it's nice to see Froze. We also have the rivalry between uh, Forte and Note coming back into play, so I'm really curious to see where that goes. They're not set up to fight yet, and so Forte's fighting somebody else and Note's fighting somebody else, but we might see them fight. Who knows? We also get to see Irito fight and beat in this next chapter, probably, because they are set to be the first fight, so that's going to be exciting. Another character we got introduced to was Basaku, or Basaku, I guess. He has a real Raditz-like uh, style, and I recognize him as one of the characters from, like, Dragon Ball Heroes that you would see. And he was also, like, a default character in Dragon Ball Online in one of the cinematics, so that's cool. And we also see a Majin that this one dude is using to try to play tricks, but the Majin dropped out, so he's uh, not very good at magic. I've not read the Neko Majin Z manga, and I now that I've actually started reading Heroes and reviewing it for the channel like this, this actually makes me want to read Mo Neko Majin Z uh, to get more info on the Majins. But yeah, the tournament's starting. They also will give you the information about this being in the same universe as the Dragon Ball series, and you get a cool uh, page with all the Dragon Ball characters there. So that's really cool, and I'm really excited. Well, I just finished chapter 12, and I gotta say it was a sweet little read. We got all the characters in a nice little um, spread with all the, you know, verses, pages, so you get to see their nice little uh, mug shots looking at each other. Uh, Beat and Irito are putting up a fight with each other. We also get some of the other characters fighting. I really liked, uh, what's her name? Viola, using Future Gohan, Future Trunks, Vegeta, and Bardock. She's talking about being a Saiyan fangirl, so that's a lot of fun there. Another thing I couldn't help notice was that we uh, saw this mysterious character who's using a sail loadout, it looks like. And there's something about loading up. There's this chick and she says, Time is running out, but there's been no change in the collected data. It's about time you made a move, isn't it? So, I don't know if she's being analytical about her fight or if there's other things at play that she's planning behind the scenes. Kind of like with the Boo Saga with Yamu and Pycon. Not Pycon. Uh, but Spelpovich. So I'm not sure there. And then we also see Sora just ditch everybody. And that was a little odd because I haven't really had the time to get attached to Sora. I know like Beat looks up to him and he's kind of a uh, famous player. And he wanted to be in the tournament but he's like judging or something. And then he's like I entrust this world to you Beat and then just leaves. So I wonder if they'll ever give me context to why he just leaves and why I should care. So... That is my thoughts on chapter 12. Pretty nice, pretty nice little few pages. Chapter 13 was another one that was pretty quick and I found it really interesting. I think they're moving quickly whenever they're mainly action pages, but the action is actually pretty good looking. I know this is Toyotaro before Dragon Ball Super, so those early complaints with Dragon Ball Super's paneling feeling a little bit flat is kind of still there. But I think where he's having to force everything on one page, it doesn't really waste any space. I really like how everything was laid out here. I like the Beerus use of the card and how he yawns. And then it looks like he's about to take out uh, Basuko, Basuku. Um, so I wonder if he'll be in the next match. We also see Forte, the rival of Note, get destroyed by this Nico chick. And in the last chapter, I was questioning if she was just being analytical or if she has other plans. But no, she was just being analytical, which makes sense, of course. And then Forte says Note's going to take care of her, so I hope Note beats her up. Uh, we also see the fight with Beat and uh, Irito. 
continue and it looks really good i think this is my highlight i really like the uh, rivalry that they've got going on here and that i think their rivalry i'm liking it so much it's actually making me invested in this story a bit more so yeah dragon ball heroes is continuing to impress me and one thing is in the last page of this chapter they show this cowboy guy in shadows and you see him again earlier in the chapter I don't know who he is. He obviously has a mustache and earrings, so he resembles jo Dr. Jero. So I wonder if there's any connection there. But yeah, I really enjoyed this chapter. I thought it was a pretty good chapter. Well, so far, chapter 14 was the one to offer the most answers, and boy, was a whopper of a chapter. So we actually see that Beat defeats Irito, and it's the classic rivalry thing where Beat, where Beat says, Let's fight again, Irito. And he says, Yeah, I won't lose next time. And so we get a lot of the fight's conclusions. Basku lost, so he storms off in a huff. I think he's probably implied to be the descendant of Vegeta because he's quite vulgar like Vegeta is. And of course, we actually see that Kabura won, and he didn't even need the Majin's help. And Viola's like, what a bummer. And so Majin, or his Majin, kind of makes some uh, rude comments and stuff, and Beat and Note are like, oh, what a rude Majin, you know? So that's kind of some comedy there. And then we see the fight starting, even though the uh, dude didn't start the fights himself. And the old guy introduces himself. Well, he doesn't introduce himself. He just announces... Well, he doesn't even announce himself. It just has the text there. It says, Dr. Otto. And he's using the wish balls from the GT uh, arc of things. And he uses it to summon the GT dragon. And, of course, the other kids that beat and note and... Um, the Namekian dude, I forgot his name, that they're fighting are revealed to be uh, Dr. Otto's grandchildren. So it's kind of like, you know, Dr. Jiro with 16, 17, and 18. So that's interesting there. They're drawing that parallel there. But what I find most interesting about this chapter is it looks like that we see uh, Zeno or uh, Zeno Gotenks and Zeno Pan. That might be who they are. I, I'm familiar with who those characters are just because being a Dragon Ball fan, I've seen them here and there in art and things. So I'm interested and this was a pretty good chapter. I really enjoyed the art and I think everything was executed pretty well. Chapter 15 really introduced the idea that, hey, we're getting into actual Dragon Ball. So by that I mean I'm not seeing a lot of card game battles now. I'm seeing, oh my god, we're in this other dimension. And the Black Smoke Dragon is here and he captured my grandson. And now Nemu is somehow turning evil by the influence of the evil dragon. So this is all pretty fun stuff. Also, that isn't Gotenks and Pan. They're, I guess they're Gotenks and Pan cosplayers. The Gotenks look alike. His name is Subasa, And the girl uh, is Momo. Chan. I'll just call her Momo. So we actually uh, got some answers to many things that I found curious, such as Sora is from another world, and so he was going back to his world. And Dr. Otto is a bad guy, but now that his grandson and what he's got, what was it, two grandsons and one granddaughter? Anyway, his grandchildren are captured, so he's imploring the heroes to save them. So that's interesting stuff there. Subasa delivers the news that the Black Smoke Dragons have pretty much conquered the entire world of Dragon Ball Heroes. All the ages are in peril, the entire universe is at stake, and it's up to our heroes to save the day. So we're getting really into classic Dragon Ball storytelling, so that's pretty exciting there. And apparently, uh, what's his name? Sora said that one of the heroes is among the tournament participants. Obviously, I think talking about Beat. And... I like the final page with Numu, Nimu waking, waking up, and um, he looks pretty evil, kind of getting some Super 17 vibes off of him, so I like this chapter. I think it was a lot of fun, and I can't wait for more. This extra bonus chapter of Neko Majin V, I was like, okay, this is like a nice little tie-in to Neko Majin, but it actually revealed that the protagonist we were following is the Majin that is accompanying Cabra. I did not expect that, and I thought that was pretty uh, interesting. We also see that his Majin is actually pretty talented at Dragon Ball Heroes. In fact, that's what he excels at. He is not a magic Cabra, I mean, a magic Majin or a martial arts Majin. He is a Dragon Ball Heroes Majin, and of course, he has the Goku 
that is the uh, definitive Goku that we see interact with the Majins in the Nick of Majin. I haven't read Nick of Majin that much, but I do know from like Google Images that he pops up there, so that's interesting there. Overall, though, this chapter was just a neat little explana explanation of things. It was a bonus chapter, nothing crazy. Didn't advance the plot, but it gave us some backstory that I thought was pretty, uh, pretty cute, pretty interesting to know. In all honesty dragon ball heroes chapter 16 was a lot of fun i really like this one because everybody's like i'm in you know if you've ever seen lord of the rings there's a moment where everybody's like and you have my axe and you have my bow and all that stuff so that's pretty much this moment froze is in i really like froze he's got a cool design he's just a kid and he's all about that life so that's pretty fun there i forgot the bald guy who's the namekian i'm just going to keep calling him the namekian dude and yeah, we see that note is in and then beat hesitates. Everybody's like, beat, why aren't you uh, like jumping to the fight? And it's because his mom has a problem with it. Oh, and the Majin dude that is Cabra's Majin, he kind of throws Cabra under the bus and volunteers him. And Cabra's like, why would you do that? And the Majin's like, you can't read a room, bro. We also see that note kind of lays it all out there with beat. And she's like, you know what? It was a card game, but now we're doing this to save the world. I'm a little scared, but I know when we all team up, we can do it. And so, you know, the Dragon Balls were real. Everything matters, and this is all our lives on the line and everything like that. And Beat's like, I'm not worried. And then um, Note's like, wait, what? So I just laid this all out, and I didn't even need to. And he's like, yeah, I don't know about all this world in peril or life and death battle stuff, but if everyone's in trouble, I can help by teaming up and fighting with my friends. Of course I'll do it. No questions asked. And then... You know, it's all like, well, then what the heck was the problem? And then, like I said, his mom was the problem. She's obviously inspired by Chi-Chi. And then his grandpa's like, nah, I let him do it. And then his mom's like, okay. Uh, because Note is kind of like, it's an educational training camp, you know? And then at the end, they're like, ah, oh, they need a team name. The Dragon Ball Heroes. That's right. The Dragon Ball Heroes were the friends we made along the way. Pretty fun. And a nice little message to end the chapter. Do you remember in the Xenoverse games whenever Trunks would send you on missions and he's like, Oh, well, I'm not going. That's how I feel about the two um, mentor-type characters that look like Gotenks and Pan. They are just sending them on missions and they're hanging out in the lobby area. So maybe you guys could help if you're so experienced. Anyway, there's five different places for them to go. They all split up to try to uh, get to the bottom of things and pretty much save the day there. And, um, we actually get a cool little sequence with the, um, Boo character, Cabra, and the main character, Beat. So, Cabra encounters a Majin-type character named Salaga, and, uh, probably a play on words for Salad, I guess. And he brings him to the Kaioshin realm from long ago, back whenever Boo destroyed it. And Cabra had no idea what that was, so he's a pretty bad Majin Boo fan. And he also recognizes the Neko Majin there. And um, it's it's fun stuff there. Uh, we go to Beat. And Beat is getting his butt handed to him by the evil Nemu, who's been controlled by the, uh, by the Dark Star Dragon dude. By the evil dragon. And um, I think he said it has the spirit of the sixth dragon, if I remember right. Um, anyway... Beat is a bit hesitant. He's not sure um, if he wants to fight, but then he realizes he has to fight after all because Nemu, there's no getting uh, around to him. So he's going to have to attach the badge to Nemu to uh, really uh, get him to go back to normal. And so you get a really cool scene at the end of the chapter, very reminiscent of the Super Saiyan Goku arc from Dragon Ball Z. And then he has his heroes out. It's GT Gohan. Zeno Gotenks, Super Saiyan 4 Goku from GT, and then a Super Saiyan Bardock. Pretty wild team there, but they're all really cool looking. And we, they actually don't show Beat's face, so I don't know if this is supposed to be him turning into a Super Saiyan or what. So maybe in the next chapter he's a Super Saiyan, I'm not sure. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this chapter, and the chapters are also getting longer. So that's pretty cool because we're closing in on the last couple chapters here. So that was pretty, pretty nice to see. Chapter 18 was really good. It's where we're getting a climax on a lot of characters' arcs. 
Necromajin V comes back after a heartfelt uh, speech from Cabra after getting beat up. We see Froze fighting Rezok, or Rezok, however you say that, on the Big Getty Star. We also get some really good action of Beat. So the chapter starts off, and Beat's like, prepare yourself, Nimu. And at the end of the last chapter, I was like, oh, did he unlock new fo a new form or anything? But really, it's just his clothes that's changed, apparently. And it's the super class upgrade for him. So he turns Super Saiyan, and he starts beating up the evil Nimu. And then the evil Nimu kind of has the... Uh, the possession knocked out of him a little bit there and then it's like oh no she takes control of him again so he gets controlled again and then we see the namekian dude have an encounter with berserk that's what he calls him in this chapter berserk i thought his name was something different but apparently it's berserk and so berserk's there to have his revenge rematch and of course he's got some of the evil influence over him and then we also see that um like i said cabra gets beat up pretty good he has a heartfelt speech Nekomajin V returns from uh, to his normal form. The curse has been lifted, so he's probably going to beat the crap out of that evil Majin dude there. And then, of course, we see Nimu do the Super 17 uh, fusion. He really quickly goes through all of his uh, enemy, uh, all of Beat's team, and then Beat's like, "Oh, I didn't know uh, that it would push me this far, but I'm going to have to use that form, unlock that form, and boom." We see Super Saiyan 3 beat. Uh, it looks really good as well. So this is the second to last chapter. This next little bit I'm going to read is the last chapter of Victory Mission. And I'll be done with Victory Mission. I'm pretty excited. I've been really enjoying this series. It's been a lovely surprise. So yeah. Well, this is awkward. I finished chapter 19 and it turns out that's not where the manga ends. Apparently that's where the translation got to and now it's on hiatus. So there's more chapters after this that I probably won't be able to get to until they're translated someday. So I'm not sure if I want to read the uh, Wikipedia entries that summarize the uh, rest of the series. Or if I want to wait for the translations to come out. If they ever come out. Anyway, what did I think of the chapter? I thought it was a pretty fun chapter. We actually see Beat beat the crap out of the villain. And he kind of teaches him a good lesson. So that was pretty cool there. I really like whenever our heroes win. We also got to see a cool fight where Berserk is like, Oh, I'm pretty much Vegeta from the Boo Saga, and I like being evil. And so he says he willingly took the power for the rematch and everything like that. So it's, of course, playing off that Goku versus Vegeta thing there. And yeah, overall, it was a pretty fun chapter. I thought, um, uh, what was the guy's name? The android-looking dude. Anyway, I thought it was cool whenever he used his super 17 that looks kind of weird he's got some black eye paint or something but yeah they beat the crap out of her and then they tease the next chapter which i'm not going to get to read apparently but uh super Saiyan 4 gt vegeta looks pretty cool anyways guys i guess that's where this series ends i thought it was a pretty f really fun series and uh let me know if i should read the wikipedia entries to know how the rest of the series ended up or if i should patiently wait however many years for the rest of the series to be translated if it ever get, does get translated but i really enjoyed this series it was a lot of fun and i was really impressed with just impressed with the series like it really i, I was going at the beginning i was like okay dragon ball heroes fan service nothing but you know fan service but i but this was really surprising so Hopefully, whenever I start the next Dragon Ball Heroes series, which is where a lot of people said you should start and that you should skip Victory Mission, but I wanted to read Victory Mission for the full package. So when I start the next one, it'll actually be in like the actual Heroes continuity with Trunks going to uh, the time place and talking to the Supreme Kai a time and stuff. So I'm really excited for that story and all that continuity for me to learn all that. So. Yeah, if you enjoyed these videos of me reviewing Victory Mission, let me know. I really want to move on to the rest of Dragon Ball Heroes. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on the video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace off.